As it's MJ, it is truly happy Sunday. Today is our journaling day. We are on the letter K. I am at the beach. Um, it's a little bit windy. I'm gonna give you a little panoramic view and then I'm gonna get back in the car and let you see the waves while I'm talking, okay? Because I know it can be very distracting whenever the waves are just crashing here on the ground. Today is Sunday. It's our journaling day. It is a double red flag, so I know that you wouldn't be able to hear me down there. It's kind of crazy. The beginning of spring break. We'll walk just a little bit further down and then we'll get back in the car. And share just a little bit of our journey. Who is ready to fly? So me. We are so ready, Jesus. We are living in some perilous, perilous times. Such perilous times. But you know what? We got Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Our King. you've had a good week and if you don't fellowship somewhere I would recommend Alan and I listen to JD Frog JDFARAG dot org um, we also go to Calvary Chapel we found a new Calvary Chapel here which is pretty amazing they do chapter by chapter verse by verse so we give it one more of the birds and get back in the car it's a little bit chilly. I always say I feel sorry for the spring breakers. <laughs> you know, during this first couple weeks in March, look at the waves. Remember, no matter how high the waves, guys, Jesus is always in the boat. Always in the boat. Yep. Everything is converging just the way it's supposed to be. Aware of every situation that's going on right now, so we need not fear, we need not worry. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart, lean not on our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct our path. You know, He doesn't want our peace to be taken from us for our joy and sometimes life circumstances have a way of troubling our peace doesn't it well you know we're in charge of that you know we're definitely in charge of that all right so let's get back in the car and i will look up this little thing so that you can hear Time. We don't hear those waves, so let's see. Yeah. How's that, guys? I got a little shell in my car. How's that? There's the path. Y'all can see the waves. There we go. Good. All right. Well, yeah, so we're journaling the letter K. I don't know what your letter K is. It. I've seen a couple words. Let me try to do this a little bit better. I've seen a couple words. One of the words was kinsman redeemer, which I found to be very, very awesome. One of the subscribers was kinsman redeemer. You know, I'm just going to hold it. I'm not putting it in that little handy dandy thing. But Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Another word is keep. He shall keep us. Those who are saved, those who are born again, we are eternally saved. 
Guys, we don't have to worry about falling. We don't have to worry. He gets us back up every time, doesn't he? He's our king. If you guys have any words on K, put them in the comment section. So yeah, we are in some perilous, perilous times that Jesus talked about. We have the Great American Eclipse coming up on the 8th. We have Ramadan, I believe, begins tomorrow. There's just a whole lot of crazy stuff going on, guys. I mean, it is ripe for destruction. Bible says, when they are saying peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them, and they shall not escape. God's not talking about us. We're walking in the light. The Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again according to Scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe, simply believe, should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, the wages or the penalty of being born into this condition called sin is death, eternal separation from a God who loves us so much that he sent his only son to die upon that cross for us, to redeem us from the curse, the Adamic nature, the Adamic curse. But you know, not everybody will receive him. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. There's another K for you. He's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. And he does what he does well. I hate to say, uh, give him a compliment. But I tell you what, guys, he does what he does pretty well. I was a prodigal for 10 years. And the lies he told me, truly I believed and received them. As if they were true. But you know what? Thank God that Jesus calls his prodigals back to himself. Regardless of what we perceive about him, regardless of the lies that the enemy tells us, that we're not good enough. It has nothing to do with our goodness, guys. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, not some of us. The wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God, the free gift, might I add, is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So God made it very simple. Religion com complicated it. You know, religion, all religions complicate things. This is not about religion. This is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, all other religions, they're reaching up for God and, you know, doing things to please God and hope that God, you know, earning brownie points with God so that in hopes that they might, maybe, perhaps, their good will outweigh the bad. While that scripture all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, all of us, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord, because the penalty of everybody's sin is death, eternal separation from God. So what is being born again? Being born again is being born again into Christ's righteousness, because none of us, our righteousness is but filthy rags. None of us have the righteousness that we need to stand before God Almighty because God is holy. For that reason, God came himself, wrapped in human flesh, to this earth, lived 33 years upon this earth, was crucified, buried, and on the third day rose again and is currently seated at the right hand of the Father and is imminently... When I say imminently, it could happen before this video is over. For this reason, I do share the gospel first. So that is the simple gospel of our salvation, guys. God didn't make it hard. You simply A, admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of a savior. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. B, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. For your own personal sins, not only for the sins of this whole wide world, but for your own personal sins. And see, call upon his name 
Guys, the Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And you know, at the moment of salvation with that little birdie, at the moment of salvation, the moment we say, I do to Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit comes, moves in, takes up residence in this very unworthy temple and seals us until the day of redemption. Don't believe what other people say that you can lose your salvation. It, it wasn't dependent upon us, guys. When Jesus said, it is finished upon that cross to tell us thy, it was finished. Our sins, past, present, and future, forgiven. So don't believe people that tell you you got to maintain your salvation. And, you know, there's so, so many lies in the churches. Remember, we are the church. The moment we become born again, we are sealed until the day of redemption. So don't let anyone lie to you. Prodigals come back to Jesus and those who don't know Jesus come to Jesus. Now you do not want to be in this world for the seven year tribulation that is rapidly, rapidly approaching. Guys, I can't tell you enough. I don't know the second it's gonna happen. I know that we are certainly in the season. We are in the season of the rapture. And we are watching and waiting for our blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. When that trumpet sounds, what is the rapture? The rapture is when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first, and we, this final generation, I believe with all of my heart, who are alive and remain, will be caught up together with them in those clouds and forever be with the Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And guys, that day is approaching like a freight train. So get on board if you're not on board because this train, I'm telling nobody knows the second that it's gonna happen, but you do not wanna be left behind in the seven year tribulation. So I would do seal that deal today, guys. I wouldn't wait another second. I would not wait another second. And that's not fear mongering. It's just sharing the facts. Because all of us, you know, all of us can agree that since the pandemic, life has gotten, gotten exponentially crazier, more difficult. These climate change people are absolutely nuts. Well, it's not about climate change, guys. It's about labor pains. Jesus said the end days would be like a woman in labor. And we've reached the end. This is the ring of fire, guys. This is it. And we got that eclipse coming up. Soon and very soon we are going to see our king. That eclipse is pending judgment. And you know, God always gives warning before destruction. He always does in the Bible. Yeah, and we're about to get out of here because the church will be raptured. The body of Christ will be raptured. This channel is 100% pre-trib, meaning that Pre-trib simply means that the church is not appointed to wrath. Look at this little birdie. He's just staying here for my videos. Thank you, Jesus. He's just staying here and hanging out with us. What a special thing. Thank you, Lord. So pre-trib simply means that the church is not appointed to God's wrath. The bride of Christ will be raptured. We will be removed, gathered, prior to the seven-year tribulation. The tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. It is not the time of the church's trouble. It is the 70th week of Daniel. So we won't be here, regardless of what people tell you, that we got to go through the tribulation, or we're in the tribulation now. That's a bunch of garbage. 
the church will be removed prior to the tribulation. That's a fact because, you know, Jesus took every bit of our wrath on that cross. And what the Bible says we're not appointed to wrath. So why would God make us go through the time of Jacob's trouble or wrath again? That would be an insult to Jesus Christ on the cross, wouldn't it? Because when he said it is finished, your sins past, present, and future are forgiven. Why in the world would we have to face the wrath of God? Doesn't make a lick of sense because it's not scriptural. So pre-trib, 100%, stay on board with that, guys. Don't let any of these fear mongers tell you that, you know, it's not going to happen. And, you know, you got to go through the tribulation. You got to prepare. And yeah, things are going to get exponentially worse. I don't know how much worse it's going to get exponentially worse. We've seen the best of things right now. Normal is not coming back. That's a guarantee. Jesus Christ is coming back. Our king is coming back. K for kingdom. That one just came to me too. They went our birdie. We're leaving soon and very soon, guys. Our little birdie's leaving. Oh no, he's just hanging out. Let me see, let me try to up my just a little. Anyway, regardless of what you got going on in your life, you know, if your prodigal's causing your emotions to be in turmoil or people in your life are causing that turmoil, remember, God does not want us our peace to be removed. He said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as this world gives you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's us. We're believers. We're believers for a reason. Believers mean that he will keep us at perfect peace. That's one of my favorite scriptures. He will keep at perfect peace he whose mind is stayed upon him. So we need to keep our eyes on Jesus, guys. And he will give us the peace that passes all understanding that will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. We have to know that and trust that and cling to that and not allow what's going on in our physical world right here. You know, this is only temporary, remember this. A lot of people are looking at the prosperity gospel and, hold on, I got this on top of my steering wheel. I hope it doesn't fall. Talk about professional filming here. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, a lot of people talk about the prosperity gospel and you know, that the church has replaced Israel and so many lies. That's why Jesus said to be careful for deception in the last days. There's so much deception in the church. And he told us to watch and wait. Lift up your heads and look up for your redemption draws nigh. That's us, guys. We should be so excited. And if your excitement has waned and you're not as excited about the rapture as you used to be that's the enemy trying to take your blessed hope remember we're not like the world we're not of this world we're in this world but we're not of this world so God doesn't want us to be feeling turmoil and confusion anxiety the Bible says be anxious for nothing Nothing. God will take care of every little thing. If he takes care of the birds of the air, the Bible says, how much more will he take care of us, O ye of little faith? And you know what? We can ask him to increase our faith. He's not, you know, appalled by that. He takes pleasure in us being still before him. 
with expectation, guys, with expectation that he is going to answer our prayers. Now, does he always answer it the way that we think he's going to or, or when? The timing? Certainly not because the rapture would have happened already, right? God knows the timing. He knows exactly. You know, he stands. God knows the end from the beginning. So he stands. He sees everything from the beginning to the end. Just like a parade. Just like a storybook. He's the creator. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He knows what we need before we even ask him. He knows everything air upon our head but you know I found in my walk that the most important thing is being still before him and journaling journaling is simply priming the pump to allow the Holy Spirit to get all that anxiety out of us to get that fear out of us to get that you know fear there's 365 verses in the Bible tell us not to fear, to be anxious for nothing. You know, that that's for a reason. Because God doesn't want us on any day to be fearful or to be anxious. So journaling helps prime the pump. And it's, you know, it's a commitment to sit before the Lord. 15 minutes, whatever you make a day, you know, ends up being a lot more than that. But you have to commit to that. And guys, you know, I've, tell, I've seen grown men cry, thinking this is for girls. And when I was a nurse in drug rehab, that was something that I implemented at that drug rehab. And something that they still do today is journal. And some things you know you don't want other people to see. So, you know, you send those papers right into the garbage. You can do that. Or you can put them in the fire. We had a fireplace there, so we would burn that stuff. There's a few doggies here. And some people walking with the doggies. So I do not want to video these people because I don't want to get a strike on my channel. Um, so oh, they're gonna go down this way, Lord. Okay, so I'm gonna just let you see this for a minute. How's that? So that's something that they still do today is let you see the clouds how's that <laughs> is journal because we had them for 90 days so we would get them for 90 days and so we got to know them pretty well you know we got to know the patients pretty well and I can't tell you the therapeutic value that journaling has you know, when you're in addiction or, you know, that is what was my sin of choice, addiction, drug, drug addiction. We're not born an alcoholic. We're not born an addict. We're not born homosexual. We're not born all of these things fill in the blank. We're born into a condition called sin. And once we deal with a lot of the early childhood trauma, guys, and the Holy Spirit brings that stuff up for us and shows us. Oh, these people are coming right back in front of my camera. So I'm going to put it down. And back there. I'm trying to do this professional job here. So, <laughs> as you guys know that I am not... I am not a professional videographer. I'm just on here. So that we can share our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior and we know that our blessed hope is arriving any moment so few okay these people are past me now there's not a whole lot of people here even though it's the beginning of spring break but I don't want to film anybody and get a strike on my channel because that happened once I didn't really get a strike but it was kind of a something from YouTube that said, you know, these people, I forget what exactly what it said. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, the drug rehab that I worked at for years, um, 
still implement that for guys too you know guys say oh you know that's for girls no I would say to guys you know we'd all sit at the table and we'd talk about you know like say what is your perception of God and what was your perception of God at five years old or what was your perception of God at ten what is your perception of God now because a lot of people grow up Catholic or you know grew up different religions and um their whole perception of God is distorted, thinking that we need to do something in order to get saved, keep our salvation. Well, of course, we have to repent, you know, come to the Lord um, and believe, you know, the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to scripture, that he was buried and on the third day rose again. But a lot of these religions or, you know, churches that people have been to, you know, have taught works. And we're not saved by works, guys. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. So, you know, I would write down, you know, let's just work on this, or let's Let's talk about what your perception of God was when you were a child. And what did your parents tell you? Who did your parents tell you God was? And, you know, did you talk to God when you were a child? Do you, you know, just whatever the Holy Spirit brings up to you. And when, what was your first death that you experienced? Because, you know, 90% of addicts or people, they're not addicts, but people who have addiction problems and have turned to addiction. That's just an anesthesia for something that is unresolved grief, unresolved early childhood trauma that's buried so very deeply in our soul. And the Holy Spirit brings that up for us. And you know, a lot of us grieve the grief that we haven't felt in years, years, 30, 40, however many years, we never f felt that grief. We didn't have the skills when we were children to even put words to, you know, abandonment issues or rejection issues or feeling rejected or lonely or, you know, and a lot of us blamed God for certain things that happened. You know, I blamed God for my papa dying of cancer when he, when I was 13. You know, just our whole perception of God is distorted. That's why we have to look at the word of God because you know who distorts the word of God and who distorts the character of God? Yep, Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. There's that K. Don't let that someone be you. Don't let him destroy your perception of who God is. I mean, although a lot of these people were saved and drug rehab and had become born again at some point, just as I had, as I got saved at 11, but you know, my perception of God was so distorted. Jesus is faithful to keep us. There's that cave. He who began a good work in us shall perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. But you know, we think we're alone out there and we're not alone guys. The Holy Spirit seals us. He's our friend. He's inside of us. He talks to us. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. They listen to the voice of no other. So, you know, journaling is simply priming the pump and seeing what's underneath there to the fullness of all that God has for us. So I'm gonna wrap it up here shortly. Um, let you guys see a few more of these humongous waves. I don't know how people are even swimming in these things. Yeah, but Jesus is the keeper of the vow, guys. What is that vow? He promised the Father that every one of these that you've given me, I will bring back to you. That's his responsibility. And he who began a good work in us shall perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Just know that in your heart, guys. Trust in his character. 
trust in his faithfulness. Know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Read the word, stay in the word. Read the word, let the word read you. Be in the word and the word in us. And be still before God. You know, I used to come to him like I've, I've shared with you guys many times, but I used to come to him like with my wheelbarrow full of problems and, you know, tell him all my problems and then in Jesus' name, amen. He already knows all our problems first off. He knows everything. He knows every hair upon our head. He knows everything we're going to ask. He knows everything we say before we even say it. So I've learned to come to him empty so he can fill me. Although the Holy Spirit abides within, we have to come to him empty so he can fill us. And give us the peace that passes all understanding. That guards our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Because this world can do a number on us, guys. But remember, we are not in, we are not of this world. We are just in this world. And we're just passing through. We are simply passing through. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of sound mind. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Love you guys. Know that I am praying for you and yours. Please, I really pray that you're utilizing this journaling tool. Um, if you haven't already purchased a journal, go out and get yourself a journal. You can get some at the Dollar Tree even. Um, it will be one of the most therapeutic tools that you've ever used. I promise you that got to stay at it though. Love you guys know that I'm praying for your prodigal and I thank you for praying for mine and our family. That God will keep at perfect peace he whose mind is stayed upon him. Love you guys until next time. Keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.